Hi, this is Mr. Ford from MrFordsClass.com and for this presentation we're going to talk about two subjects that are very important, troubleshooting and customer service. If anyone out there has been in customer service, you know that the job would really be great if it wasn't for the customers. No, that's not necessarily true. I find that we can make a difference in how the customer behaves and acts towards us. They can either be your best buddy or they can be your arch nemesis. It all depends on how you treat them for the most part. Some people are just jerks. Anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about troubleshooting a computer. If you were to go to a, a, a medical doctor, a physician, and they came into the, came into the waiting room or the, the patient room, and they started poking and prodding you without even talking to you, you'd probably find a new doctor. They go through a series of steps to diagnose your problem. They listen to you, they ask specific questions, all of this is leading towards a diagnosis. Computer work should be no different. It's going to be you know, slight variations, but we should be thinking critically of what's going on, what, sh what it could be, as well as alternative diagnoses. If it's not this, then it could be that. We also need to keep the customers in a loop on this, but let's kind of get ahead of ourselves. Things to ask. First of all, before you even start talking to the customer, before you start getting into your whole you know, geek mode, listen to them. They're going to come in with complaints, they might have been having this problem for a while and they want to talk to you about it. They're going to say, you know, my computer's got this problem, I got these pop-up stuff every time I try to check, you know, my bingo scores and, and uh, you know, I try to get onto, you know, sewing websites and, and all these things pop up and my computer's running slow and I boot it up, blah, 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 blah. You want to listen to what they have to say. This is called active listening. Once they're done talking, you then sum up what they've said back to them. You want to have confirm that what you think they said, they actually said. So they may go on for five minutes basically talking about spyware and viruses. You sum up and you say, hey, if I'm, if I'm understanding you correctly, you're saying that you're getting pop-ups, the computer's really running slow. Am I right? Yeah, am I right? They'll say yes or no. If they say yes, go, okay, cool. Now you start asking specific questions. You start to ask, you know, when did this problem first occur? When did you first notice this problem? Today, last week, a month from now, and they'll let you know. The next thing you should ask is, has the computer ever worked? Now, if they told you that the problem happened today and before the computer is working fine, you know the computer was working. But I've had some situations where customers come in and they say, this computer won't boot, this computer won't boot, this computer won't boot. And I've seen technicians go through this whole list of things only to find out the computer never booted like out of the box. It happens sometimes. So find out if the computer's ever worked before in the past. Something else you should consider is, has there been any new software or hardware installed before this problem occurred? For example, if you have a customer come in who says that they, uh, their, their video game doesn't work, and you ask, uh, you know, well, was there any new software or hardware installed? Was there any new hardware installed before this problem occurred? And they go, yeah, you know, my video card. I put my video card in, and now my computer won't play the game. Well, hopefully you're thinking video card's the problem. Notice I'm avoiding the word, what did you install? We'll talk about that in a minute. How often does this problem occur? Does this thing occur every time you boot up? Does the problem occur every 30 minutes or so? If the computer's shutting itself down every 10 to 20 minutes, you might want to think overheating. If the computer has a problem during boot up, that's a whole different ball of wax which you'll learn through this course. If the problem exists only when you launch, let's say, Microsoft Office, you know there's a problem with Office. So these questions kind of lead you towards the diagnosis. In fact, I've heard some people say that 70 to 80 percent of your diagnosis is going to come from your history. If you listen and ask the right questions, you should almost know what it is before you even turn the computer on or open the computer case. This is how important it is to listen to the customer. Also, if you're in a situation where you don't get to talk to the customer before working on their computer, for example, you're working on a high volume tech bench and somebody checks the computer in and you don't get to talk to that person, you better make sure everyone who's checking the computers is taking good notes. Write down what the customer says. You might also want to write down what you think it is, kind of a preliminary, this is what I think is the problem. If you're not talking to the customer, make sure whoever is is taking really good notes because like I said, 70 to 80% of your diagno diagnosis is going to be done by talking to that customer. All right, how to ask the question 
is as important as what to ask. If I have a customer come in, they're probably going to be very frustrated with their computer. They're thinking, oh man, I've got to bring this computer in, this is going to cost me money, blah, 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 all these computer people are rude. And if I got a person across my table and I start asking, what did you do to the computer? What did you install into the computer? It's not going to be a very happy person. Try to avoid anything that sounds like you're accusing the customer of messing up their computer. Instead, notice before I said, was there any new software or hardware installed before this problem occurred? I'm not saying, did you install? I'm saying, was there any hardware or software installed? Avoid saying you to the customer. Don't say, what did you do? What did you install? How did you screw up the computer? You're a noob. Don't do that. The customer will not be happy with you. Avoid accusing the customer of anything. Also, use the word we. If you ever notice, doctors used to come into the, op the exam room and say, how are we feeling today? You want to kind of sympathize, empathize with that customer. You want to be kind of, not on this side of the table, but next to them as their buddy. I don't physically get next to them, but, but you want to kind of, in your mind, be next to them as their buddy talking about their computer. You don't want to go, you know, back over here, I'm the computer expert. You want to be part of their problem. You want to be part of, of their world at that moment. Use the term we. How can we help you today? Oh, man, that does sound like a bad problem. Well, you know, I, I think we can take care of that for you. Um, be, be in their shoes when you're dealing with them. If they're talking about something being frust very frustrating, say, I, man, no kidding, I hate when that happens too to my computer. Oh, yeah, those viruses, man, those things are nasty, man. I, I'm constantly fighting on my computer as well. Be part of their world. Don't be that computer geek back there who's a rude little punk. Be their buddy when dealing with them. Which also brings us another point. The customer knows this is going to cost money to fix the computer. What I typically do, and since I've done this, I've never had a customer get angry at me. If I've got a customer who, let's say, it could be a problem with their hard drive, or it could be a problem with their ribbon cable, or it could be a problem with their motherboard. Well, a ribbon cable is like a buck, two bucks to, to put in, plus a little labor cost. And you want to charge labor, by the way, because you're getting paid for your expertise. Maybe the total price was 20 to 50 bucks. You let them know, say, look, you know, this could be, there's three possible scenarios here. The best scenario is it's a ribbon cable, you put a new ribbon cable and you're good to go. And, you know, you may want to give it to them if they're a good customer or you're, or you're feeling, you know, particularly generous. You might want to throw in the ribbon cable, let them have a nice day. It's up to you. Remember, you're the expert, you're going through school, you should be paid for your time. But in my own office, in my own practice, I've also given work away for free just to be a nice guy. So I may tell the customer, look, it could be a ribbon cable. New ribbon cable, you're good to go. If it's not the ribbon cable, then it could be the hard drive. The hard drive is bad, but you're looking at like 80 bucks, 100 bucks for a new hard drive, plus labor, plus you've got to reinstall the operating system, plus you might lose some data. Total cost there, let's say $200. So the customer has a $50 option, a $200 option. Then you say in the worst possible scenario is your motherboard's dead. If your motherboard's dead, that's like $100 to $200 for a new motherboard, plus your labor because you've got to reinstall everything, you're looking at four to $500. The customer knows there's three possible problems with his computer. He knows that he wants the first problem. He knows he only wants to spend 50 bucks. The second problem is not that good, but it's still better than the third problem. And you're not making this stuff up. These could be actual problems with the computer. When you call that client up, you say, hey, I got some great news for you. And they're like, really? Go, yeah. It's not the worst problem. It's not the motherboard. It's not the hard drive. It's just a ribbon cable. 50 bucks and you're done. They will be happy to spend $50 at that point in time. Let's say it's a worst case scenario. Let's say it's the hard drive. You say, I got some good news and bad news for you. The bad news is it's not the ribbon cable. They're like, oh boy. The good news is it's not the motherboard. So they go, oh, it was the hard drive. And you go, yeah, that's 100 bucks. And they'll be happy to pay it. They're not angry at you. They're not yelling at you. Let's say it's the worst possible scenario. You call them on the phone and go, remember what we talked about, about the three possible problems? And they'll go, yeah. So we say, well, I've got bad news for you. It's the worst case scenario. It's the motherboard. It's dead. What do you want to do? And here's where you're being honest. And you should be honest throughout the process. You tell them, look, a new motherboard costs you $200 plus all the install. You know, a new computer's only going to cost you four or 500 bucks or $1,000, depending on what kind of computer they want. 
you know, do you want me to fix this computer or do you just want to buy a new one? Yes, you're giving money away, potentially giving money away. But you know what? The customer will appreciate it and you will be their computer person from now until whenever. So be honest with these customers. Give them the options. Every time I've seen a customer angry, it's because the tech has told them one thing. Oh, it's probably a ribbon cable. And then when they got to make that phone call, they got to tell them it's their motherboard. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this customer is dealing with a two, $300, $400 shock. Now they're angry. Now you're the incompetent tech. Keep them in the loop about what could be the possible problems, what are the possible prices, and you will not have an angry customer at you. And one last note, repair time. I have fixed many computers that have viruses and spyware. It typically takes to clean up viruses, from clean up spyware, to update the computer, everything said and done, typically takes, let's say, about four to five hours to do, to do it right. I am not going to tell customers it's only take five hours. Add time to your estimation. Because the minute you go right to the wire on how much time this is going to take is the minute that something happens. That's going to be the time something weird happens. I've never fixed the same computer twice. Meaning I've always had different problems with the computer. It might look like the same problem, but there's little kind of twists to the scenarios. you got to make sure that you add time to your estimate. Now I'm not talking you add two days, but add some hours or maybe add a day to your estimate. When you under promise and over deliver, you're a hero. When you promise and deliver at the same time, you're good. The worst thing is when you over promise and under deliver, then you're incompetent. So always do what Scotty and the Enterprise used to do. You know, say, oh, Captain, it's going to take you know this much time and do it a lot less time. You'll be a hero, you'll keep your customers happy, and you'll be an invaluable tech at wherever you work. Thank you for watching, and we'll catch you later.